about you? Did you eat lunch? I had that shrimp cocktail in the fridge. Was it yours? I hope not. I couldn't remember, so I ate it. Maybe we should write our names on our food items from now on. What do you think? So you sit over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, no need to, to say this, but still, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Charlie Kaufman. <laughs> And uh, what we just saw uh, was a scene from Adaptation, and mm -hmm. it's uh, your adaptation uh, of the novel The Orchid, Orchid Chief. Orchid Chief, Chief yeah. Thief, sorry. Okay. Uh, um, uh, and it's directed by Spike Jones. That's right. And you were nominated to an Oscar for or Academy Award for this script together with your fictional twin brother, Donald Kaufman. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. which I saw uh, Nicolas Cage's uh, interpre interpretation of him, or uh, sorry, of both of you, or <laughs> both of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, and I just want to say that this quality of Charlie Kaufman, uh, where uh, you erase the borders between fiction and reality, uh, is just marvelous. And it's one of the reasons that we decided to give Charlie Kaufman the first honorary Dragon Award. Thank you. This year. And, uh, <laughs> I, I am sure that um, most of the audience know everything about you. Your films have been screened in theaters in Sweden. And, but I just want to like, do a, a small refresh, uh, refreshment, no, sorry, <laughs> refreshing of our memories <laughs> uh, with a short introduction. So... Charlie Kaufman uh, started out as a scriptwriter for television uh, and uh, now has written six screenplays for uh, feature films and um, was nominated for an Academy Award for uh, the screenplays for Being John Malkovich and also Adaptation and uh, won an Academy Award for uh, the script, uh, screenplay for Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. And uh, in 2008, Charlie Kaufman made his di directorial debut with Synecdoche in New York. And uh, we nominated that film for our own, uh, the Ingmar Bergman International Debut Award. And we invited Charlie Kaufman to come here, but uh, he couldn't come then. But we are so pleased and happy that you could come this year. Thank you. So, uh, this event here is called a masterclass. So we all um, have a little hope that we should uh, walk away with some uh, um, enhanced uh, knowledge about how to write a screenplay. Oh. <laughs> You've come to the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we just saw your alter ego, uh, the character Charlie Kaufman of the film uh, Adaptation, talking about how he feels about script writing uh, courses. And uh, so I'm not sure how we're going to succeed, but let's try. And so, so let's start there. How, how do you feel yourself to, to teach about teaching other people how to write a screenplay? Uh, yeah, me teaching it? Yeah. Um, or, 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 or both, both you I, or, and uh, other people. I, don't, I, I guess I agree with the character um, in the movie. I, I don't... It doesn't. It doesn't appeal to me to 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 be to to have a kind of a formula um, for writing anything. So um, I think some people like it, and it's helpful for some people. And I wouldn't tell people not to do it if they want to do it. But I, I'm um, I'm not interested in 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 sort of going in with a with a framework. I think it in, inhibits the possibilities for me. Mm. And uh, the, the, the funny thing about the, um, the film adaptation is that um, Charlie starts out with, in the beginning with all these firm statements about uh, how to not write a, a screenplay and what you, how you should approach the process. But he kind of adapts to um, 
his brother Donald's enthusiasm for for masters like McKay and uh, I'm not sure he adapts to the enthusiasm as much as that he he's desperate to finish this project and he doesn't know how to do it. So, uh, um, to my mind, uh, the movie adaptation, the, the main character in that movie is the screenplay itself and the, um, the, the evolution of the screenplay from, um, from its initial intents to its uh, ultimate kind of corruption. Um, um, and to me, that, that's kind of the, the tragedy of this creature that is the screenplay that never was able to uh, reach the, the fruition that, that Charlie had hoped. He never was able to make a movie about flowers, you know? Um, uh, so, I, uh, Donald, Donald represents, I guess, a corrupting influence, I think. But, um, I mean, he's a nice enough guy. I don't, you know, probably much nicer than Charlie, but I don't think he helps matters, really. Mm. Um, uh, it's interesting to talk about those um, not cliches or script writing uh, formulas. Uh, our honorary president, Roy Anderson, he was here yesterday at the, the award ceremony. And last year, he held the opening speech, and he, he talks a lot always about the responsibilities you have as a filmmaker, like what what um, things you put out there, what images you put out there. How, how do you feel about that? I think it's an enormous responsibility. I mean, I think that, you know, you have the responsibility to, to be truthful. Um, if you're going to put something into the world that so many people are going to get stuck in their brain, you know, um, which is what happens. I don't think you want to, you don't want, you want to, you know, it's like, it's like the Hippocratic Oath, sort of, you know. You, you first do no harm, you know. Um, so I, t I take that very seriously. Mm. And um, for instance, uh, you have said that ho Hollywood romances have been very damaging to people's real, actual relationships. Well, to my real relationships, I can... <laughs> I can only speak for myself, but um, if I figure maybe somebody else out there has had the same problem. No, I mean, it, it sort of uh, sets up, uh, I think, unreal expectations, which I think you then, you know, project onto your partner and, you know, and it sort of destroys the possibility of an actual, you know, conversation between people, you know. So, so what's the? Uh, so, how should you go about? How or how do you do to? Um, well, to I'm avoid so very this? successful at this. So, um, <laughs> let me give you my relationship advice. No, I mean, I, don't, I, don't, I, I mean, I, uh, <laughs> I just, you know, I just want to. I just sort of the idea that I could watch one of these movies that you know that that would make me feel less lonely in my misery is kind of the is sort of the idea. You know, like if you do something that is truthful, you know, I mean, truthful in the subjective personal sense, not in any kind of, you know, uh, larger sense, that, that, that maybe somebody else in the world can hold on to it and not feel like they're a complete, you know, freak for, for not living in this other, you know, romantic comedy world. Um, th that's all I can hope for. Mm. Um. And... Um so, uh, still it seems that um, the other... Um, type of script, screenplays are very popular uh, mm -hmm. in the world. And do you have any idea or do you want to talk about what, why do you think that is? Well, you know, um, the Republicans in the United States have a, a theory um, and that the reason that they can get support from people who they're not helping at all um, is because they, these people aspire to the American dream, you know? So, um, well, I think it's sort of the same thing. I mean, it's like this hopeful thing that you're going to be, you know, living your life to, to a soundtrack, I guess. And, um, and, and so it's appealing. Um, but I think ultimately, I don't think it really is appealing. I think it's appealing in the sort of very sort of 
you know, uh, sort of short run kind of way. But then, you know, when then you have to get back to the actual sort of business of living your life and you suddenly feel like you're really less than, you know. Um, and I don't think that that's um, ultimately helpful for people. But, you know, I think you give people mindless stuff and you give them a lot of, you know, kids like a lot of sugar. It's not mm. good for them, but, um, but it's sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I heard you say in uh, another um, interview that writing a screenplay is all about experience and creativity. And I thought we would start with uh, talking about a little bit about your own creativity. Uh, you started as a writer for TV. And that's, that's a group process, if I understand it right. It, um, it is, in the, yeah. At least sitcom, situation comedy writing in the U.S. is in a group. I don't, I don't know about the dramas. I've never, I never did that. I think it might be more individual. But yeah, you sit in a room with a bunch of other comedy writers and you pitch jokes. And, uh, you know, the first job I got, I didn't say a word for six weeks. And every day I, I would go home and think that I was going to get fired that day. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was so scared and so shy and so inhibited. And, uh, and I, I mean, it was, it's a competition, you know, because you're, you're vying for the affection of your boss, who's your dad, you know, really, in the situation. And um, so it's really weird, and kind of, um, some, of, some, of the, some of those writers' rooms are really um, scary. Uh, and, um, you know, that older brother that you hate, because you're... Your dad likes him more, <laughs> you know. But um, but I was really nervous, and so because um, I came out of n- nowhere, really, I just got this job, having never done anything like this before, and so. Um, uh, but I didn't get fired, so I don't know why. Hmm. Can you see any any positive things about the group writing process? And then I mean, m- m- more than two people. Um. Yeah, I think it works. I mean, in terms of the end result or in terms of my learning how to do it or... Yeah, you, both. I think that, you know, if you've got a room full of funny people, you can really polish a script, you know? You can really get a lot of jokes in there and get better jokes in there. And for that type of writing, I think it can be successful and helpful. And, um, you know, and... Uh, um, I, I don't think it can be very personal. I don't think it's trying to be, but I think that's the that's the um, for me that's the limitation of it. Mm. What's your uh, what did you gain from from being in that process that you can use in your writing now? I gained the ability to talk in public mm. um, because I had to, and so I I got better at that and um, and less nervous about it. And then I had some success in that situation, and it gave me some confidence. Um, I mean, the, the first time, the first actual thing that I did professionally was I got a, a, an offer to pitch, a, and, um, and by the way, the word pitch is something that I promised I would never say, <laughs> um, and then I found myself saying it. So, uh, but I, I, got a, I got an opportunity to pitch. I don't know if you know who Yogi Bear is. I don't know if that's a, that's a, a, a cartoon, Hanna-Barbera cartoon. And they were doing this, Hanna-Barbera was doing a, a Yogi Bear summer camp cartoon. And all the different Hanna-Barbera characters were going to be going to summer camp together. And um, I, got a, I got an offer to pitch the idea for this thing. And, um, and I was living in Minnesota at the time, and um, so I had to do it over the phone. And um, I was so nervous... I mean, I spent like a week preparing this thing, and it was really complex. I mean, it was way too complex for Yogi Bear. It was really good. <laughs> but, but, it, but it, you know, I mean, I was trying to make it like, you know, like this thing, you know, this amazing thing. And, um, and uh, you know, but, but I, I got on the phone, and like I had, I, I had my wife had to leave, you know, because I, I couldn't talk in front of her, and, I, and my, vo- my voice was like this. So then Yogi says, you know, and, <laughs> and, um, 
And it was for Yogi Bear, you know? I mean... So in that sense, I've really, I've really come a long way. Because I wouldn't be nervous about pitching a Yogi Bear thing anymore, you know? <laughs> I really wouldn't. I would be okay. And I was like, you know, fuck you, man. I'm this Yogi Bear. I don't... You know? You're going to really have to pay me a lot of money to, <laughs> to do this. In, uh, in the beginning of your career, you, you also wrote a lot together with uh, another uh, writer called Paul Pro. I don't know how Proch. to... Proch. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what, what is good about writing in, in a pair? Can you be more personal when you're only two persons? No. I mean, that was the problem. I mean, we had, over time, we had a lot of sort of problems together. But, I mean, I think what was good about writing with Paul. I mean, there were so many things that were good about it. And, um, and, and the thing that when I stopped doing it that was very difficult for me was that, um, well, there's two things. One is you're, ba you're bouncing stuff off of someone who, it, it, in this case, I thought was funny. So if I could make Paul laugh, then I felt like, okay, I, I, I've succeeded, you know? Um, but the other thing is that there's this, like, um, synthesis of personalities, and you're kind of like, you don't know what the other person is going to say, so you're bouncing stuff um, against sort of uh, against the unknown. And I think that's the good thing about a collaboration. And, and when I started working, when I stopped working with Paul, I became very paralyzed because it was just me, you know, in a room. And I thought, my, you know, everything I thought was very familiar because I was thinking it. So it wasn't like a, so I couldn't surprise myself in any way. Um, so... The thing I did, and I did it with, with being John Malkovich specifically, is I decided that I was going to collaborate with myself. And um, the way to do that, I thought, was to get myself off of the track that was very familiar that I was just going to go down with. The story idea was to take two different stories and force them into one script and so that they would have to basically be like, you know, Paul and me, you know, except they'd be stories instead of people. And... Um, And so I, I had two ideas. One was about a guy who has, uh, who falls in love with someone who, who he works with, a married guy. And the other was about someone finding a portal into someone else's head. And I, I tried to put them into the same thing. And I found it was quite enjoyable for me to, to work that way. So, um, and helpful. So, but, um, so that's collaborating with myself, collaborating with Paul you know, is kind of the same thing, but less, I, you know, if I want to veer off and go in a certain direction and Paul just stares at me, which he did a lot of, um, towards the end, you know, it doesn't happen. So, um, so this way I can do that by myself. And, and, and ultimately I think it's maybe not as much fun, but it's, it's more mine, you know. Okay, so we're going to actually watch a clip now from uh, being John Malkovich. Mm. So, um, uh, we are segue. sitting here. No, we're, we're leaving. We're leaving. We're yeah. leaving? No, no. We, we, just, we walk off stage and then we will show the clip and then we will walk, walk back Wait, up. So, I'm going back to my hotel now? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, being John Malkovich, this was the, your first uh, screenplay uh, by yourself. Yes. And your debut yes. uh, as in the film. So let's uh, talk about creativity, which was the other thing that was important in, in, in writing. Um, I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't know, but it, what your, your scripts often include very unrealistic and um, surreal things, like walking into somebody else's head, for instance. And, and um, how... Um, it's very... Uh, first of all, how do you come... Where do you... How do you, what do you do to produce the ideas? And second of all, how do you make them work? It's very big, wide questions, but... Uh... You know, I don't know how I, or where I come up with ideas, except I, I could say, you know, specifically in that case, it, it had to do with, you know, thinking about um, wanting to be someone other than myself. And that sort of um, um, that, that sort of uh, emotional issue, and then um, and then I I thought this was funny, you know. It's sort of like 
it just was funny to me, the idea that um, you would find your way into John Malkovich's head. Mm. I, so, I, you know, I, tr- I mean, I, trust, I trusted that, that it was funny because I thought it was funny. And um, so, you know, and also just because it seemed so wrong, maybe that's why I thought it was funny too, but it's just, you know, just sort of, it just seemed so arbitrary that it mm. struck me as funny. Mm. And, you know, uh, it's, uh, if I would write, you know, uh, it could be end up very silly or and ridiculous. I mean, s- s- ideas like that. How? how do, I mean, can you say something about how how you do to not make it silly? Because it, it isn't silly and ridiculous. In, in well, because for me, that there's got to be a, a kind of like a real emotional basis for what's going on with the characters. If there isn't anything, then it's just silly or it's just weird, and it just feels like um, it feels like frivolous to me. You know, it, it's, it, it, it has to be about something. And then within, the other thing is that within that reality, the characters are very serious about it. You know, they're, they're going through this, you know. So, you know, it's fun for me to think, well, if you found a portal, if this person found a portal into, into John Malkovich's head, what would he try to do with it, you know? Um, you know, and then, you know, you think he's trying to impress this woman at work, and um, so he's going to tell her about it, and then this particular woman at work, what would she want to do with it, you know? And why would he go along with it? Because, you know, he's trying to keep, trying to get her to be engaged with him um, in some way, you know? And then, well, what would happen if his wife found out about it? I mean, it's just sort of like you just, and you try to keep those at very sort of real emotional places. And I think that, you know, I felt that way, and Spike Jones felt that way, and so the actors were directed that way, and then it gets grounded somehow, I think. Mm. Um, and it's, um, um, yeah, uh, I'm going to ask about, um, when you wrote Adaptation, uh, that was also a very unusual approach um, uh, to make an ad- adaptation, and this is this is also a, an original and not not very us- usual idea, and it was a big adaptation was a big risk for you. Oh yeah. And you have said that you you like taking risks in in your work. I think it's a, I think it's kind of the job description mm. for me. I mean, I think that's what I have to do. I don't think I'm doing my, I don't think I'm doing my job if I don't do that. So yeah, but but still, it's scary. It was especially scary at that point because I was. You know, um, we were still shooting Malkovich when I was working on that script, so I didn't have any real reputation at all to fall back on. And I, I thought, oh, this is it. this is it. This is the end. And I didn't want to tell them, the studio, the idea to find out if it was okay, because I was afraid they were going to say no, and I just didn't have any other ideas. So I thought, okay, this is it. You know. Um, but at the same time, I mean, I had a certain kind of like playfulness about it like you know I actually turned the script in you know you said it was co-written by a a fictitious person I turned the script in to the producers with my brother's name on it as well as mine and um and it turns out I found out later that he was really angry because you know they'd hired me and he was like what why is he like you know we didn't hire this other person to do this with him and uh (laughs) so but you know it worked out. <laughs> it did. But uh, I was wondering, how, do you have any advice if, if we want to be more risky ourselves and take, take more risks? Uh, what can you do? I mean, because uh, I, for instance, I'm very, I don't want to take risks, uh, but I, I guess I, I need to. But you have this, you don't want to, but you need to. How do you challenge yourself? Um. I think if you're not, if what you're doing does not have the possibility of failing, then by definition you're not doing anything new. That's really this, that's sort of the way it is. I mean, if you, if you know how to do what it is that you're doing and, and or you've seen it done before, then, then you're not doing anything. So the only way that you can do anything new or interesting is, is to open yourself up to that risk of failing. And in that sense, I try to look at failure and success 
as, at both as neutral things. It's hard, and I'm not always successful at <laughs> accepting failure, but, um, uh, but, I, but I, I feel like I need to kind of keep reminding myself of that, that this is, the, this is the only way that it'll be worth anything at all. Maybe it won't be, but it won't, definitely won't be if I don't do that. Mm. Um, what I find in your films um, is that the surreal, like science fiction elements, they are all, um, they're usually visualized in a very low key uh, mm -hmm. way. Uh, like this tunnel which you saw, it's very like, it's like a tunnel from a theater stage or something. Right. Uh, can you tell us a bit, is that you and the director together that decides that, or is it in the script? Well, um, I'd say, that, well, there's two things. I mean, I think the low-tech sort of thing is, is, is sort of, it, it feels instinctively what makes it funny, you know? It feels like that's funnier, I think. In terms of this specific way this um, tunnel looks, uh, I, I describe it in the script as vaginal, and I think that Spike made it anal, and, uh, um, and it's it's not what I wanted. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, it you know, it's all water under the bridge now. So. <laughs> And uh, another thing that I find in your films is that they are um, often about people who take themselves very seriously. Yeah. C Craig, he takes himself very, very seriously. And uh, John Malkovich actually turns into Craig mm -hmm. <laughs> with the same haircut and everything once he has uh, take, taken his residence in his head. What, what's so funny about uh, people taking themselves uh, seriously? I don't know. I mean, I think that I don't know if that's funny or if it's just true. You know, if, I mean, people people take themselves seriously, and their struggles are very serious to them. Um, and you know, I mean, I, I mean, I think the thing that's sort of interesting is that by agreeing to do this, John Malkovich was showing that he wasn't taking himself very seriously, but the character. The character certainly was, you know. Um, I don't know. Life is hard, and everyone's got a struggle, I think. And so, and I guess maybe I, that's sort of the way I am. And maybe I, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a carefree person. And maybe so, it's, maybe I don't write carefree people because of that. I don't know. Wish I, wish I were. <laughs> <laughs> um, we. Um I had a press conference earlier where we talked a little bit about uh, your inspiration and in influences. And you, you read a lot. I read <laughs> that you read a lot. <laughs> and uh, uh, can you, I mean, uh, can you tell us a bit about writers you like and what if you can bring something from them into your work? Um, I like, I don't know, I like a lot of different people, and I've liked a lot of different people at different times for different reasons. Um, I guess the people that I feel probably m my stuff is, is most directly influenced by are people like, I guess, uh, Kafka and Beckett and UNESCO. And um, Pirin Pirandello was... was um, um, Six Characters in Search of an Author was something that um, I, I, I read in high school that um, I didn't really like the play very much. I thought it was really, really dull, but I liked the idea of it a lot. Anything that sort of, sort of steps out of what I'm going to expect um, in, in form or content um, or literally steps out of itself is, it was really fascinating to me. Um, and so I think a lot about that, um, you know, which I guess gets labeled meta, um, which is not a label that I would ever um, ascribe to anything, including things I do. But it, it's sort of, I guess that's sort of what people call it. Mm -hmm. I don't know.
I, hate, I really hate that kind of stuff. Um, I think it's time for the last clip. It's from your, from, it's from Synecdic in New York. Okay. And I, I'm just going to say, it's a bit, um, just going to say something about it. The, the film is, um, uh, um, well, the film is about this man, Caden Cotard, mm -hmm. and he's played by Philip Seymour Hoffman, Seymour Hoffman, and Caden is a theater director. Yes. And he, he got this large cash award, which uh, made it possible for him to be the life-size model of New York inside this warehouse, or, or kind of... It's a full-size replica of full New York. Full-size replica in, of New York. Inside a warehouse in New York. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so he's staging his own life there. Yes. And it just goes on and on, and he... Uh, yes. Uh, he puts in uh, stand or uh, you know replicas of the real people, and then they become important in his life, and he has to put put in yeah. more replicas. Well, there's a there's um, within the replica of New York in the warehouse, there is a replica of the warehouse, <laughs> um, and within that warehouse, there's another full size replica of New York, <laughs> and then and the warehouse, and um, I. Th and in the clip, we're, <laughs> we're in this warehouse, or uh, one of them, <laughs> and uh, we're going to see Caden and also his, his real wife, um, Claire, played by Michelle Williams, uh, playing against a man playing Caden, basically. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> I was... Um watching that, wondering what that would look like if you hadn't seen the movie. I, I, I made the movie and I didn't even understand what was going on there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, y you said also at the press conference earlier that y you decide the title for the script, the last thing you do. You save it for... Yeah, I mean, sometimes I come up with a bunch of titles as I'm working and then at the end I look in and, and you know, and look at those or come up with others. But yeah, this, this came up with, was come up with at the end. Can I asked a couple of people. What? Yeah, yeah, can you tell us a little bit about this title, The Synecdoche in New York, and uh, how come you finally chose that one? Um, I think ultimately I chose it because it sounded mysterious to me, but... Um, uh, but it, it, there's a there's a city in upstate New York called Schenectady, and um, I always thought that the word Schenectady sounded like Schenectady. So I thought, well, the the story at the beginning anyway takes place in Schenectady, New York. So I thought, um, but I, I, I don't if Schenectady. I don't know if it it translates in, into Swedish or. Um, or if there's an equivalent word, but it's... Um, is, is there? Yeah, there is, yes, but okay. it, it's the, almost the same. So, oh, but, it is, okay. So please please uh, explain it <laughs> a little bit. It's, it's, it's kind of a turn of phrase when you, um, when you take... Uh, it, it can go different ways, but when you take... Uh, uh, use the part of, part of something to describe the whole of it. Um, I'm thinking of examples in English because... I don't know any examples in Swedish, but um, you know, like if you call your you call your car your wheels, um, that's a synecdoche. Um, uh, uh, but also, if you take the whole of something to describe a piece of something, like if you take if you're talking about a a cop and you call him the law, that's a, he's you know he's a part of the law. He's a part of law enforcement, but he's not the law. Um, those are those are synecdoches, and so. I mean, there's a bunch of different uh, reasons um, that it seemed appropriate to me. But I, I make it a, a point never to sort of describe my reasons for anything because, uh, because I think that that's sort of like, this is the movie and, you know, you can find what you find in it. And uh, my, my telling you isn't, isn't really, that doesn't really allow for that, you know. To, for, for it to become yours, you know, your own experience, so. Yeah. I, I made a reflection on, on this film, Synecdoche in New York, I don't know if it's relevant, but that it could be about the impossibility to, to tell a story, because every time you try, uh, you will, it, I mean, uh, th like, like for Caden, life is so vast and complicated, and he tries desperately to 
write a play about it, but it's it's impossible. It just goes out of his hands, and yeah, um, because reality is very complicated and totally without structure. How, how do you relate to to the fact, uh, the possibility or impossibility to, t to tell a story? I always come up against it when I'm working. I mean, it's always. I guess it's one of the reasons that my stuff is very self-conscious is because I, I'm always trying to sort of be, be inclusive of, of the, that, that consciousness, if that makes any sense. So, um, uh, yeah, I, I think that it's... Um, I'm not really interested in stories, um, I guess, because I think stories are things that are kind of, you know, polished and and seen from a distance. And I want to try to do stuff where it feels like it's immersed, where I'm immersed in it when I'm working on it, and that it, the, the, the audience will experience that immersion or that, that the chaos and confusion of, of, of actual existence, as opposed to, you know, a story with a beginning and a middle and an end and, you know, and a, and, a, and a kind of a distance and a perspective and a life lesson and all this stuff that doesn't really seem part of the actual moment-to-moment -moment life that, that I have. Um, does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It does. Good. And uh, with this film, you, you moved into direction yourself. Yes. It was the first time. How did you... Um, like uh, learn the craft of directing? Uh, was it with the, your collaborations with uh, Spike Jones or Michel Gondry or did you have any other way? I mean, I, I went, I had gone to film school and, you know, studied film production, uh, you know, many years ago. And then, um, yeah, I learned, I think I learned a lot and, and I got a lot of confidence being involved with the other movies, you know, and, and seeing how they're done. And, and then I think, you know, I learned a lot um, making the movie which is probably, the, I guess, the best way to, to, to do it. Again, it was kind of like, okay, well, this is a risk, but um, I'm going to sort of not worry about the possibility of failure and just kind of jump in and do it. So um, I think that there are certain parts of my life that I'm more brave in than other, others, and I think that maybe work I'm more brave than I am in my actual life. <laughs> well, there's no question. I am. <laughs> Was it anything that surprised you about directing that uh, was harder than you thought it would be? No, it was exactly what I expected. It was hard, but it was, mm. um, I mean, it was, but it was a grind. And in a, in a way, it was sort of easier than writing because, for me anyway, because there's a schedule and you have to stick to it and you get it or you don't get it and then you move on, you know? Um, and where I, whereas when I write, if I don't get something, I can spend six months staring at the page, and I, I can't do that when I'm making a movie. So in that sense, it's kind of like r there's a rigid schedule, which is very helpful mm. to me. Mm. And uh, you, you I, I read that you were an actor yourself in, in earlier in life? When I was a kid, yeah. C could you draw something from that e experience while d directing your I actors? I hope so, yeah. I mean, I, I, hope, I hope... I like working with actors, and I, I feel like I have some sort of background in in thinking about things the way they do, or at least, you know, the way I did when I was doing it. So, um, so yeah, I, I, th I mean, that is a way for me to, to sort of keep in touch with that thing that I was interested in so long ago, but, but, I, I, but without having to try to be an actor, which I couldn't do anymore. Is it... Um how do you direct actors? Do you have like a formula or a, like a trick, or is it very individual? I think that, that the, my I think the two things I I learned or I felt like I learned going in was I I can't direct like anybody but me, you know, like I can't take lessons from Spike about how to direct because basically I have to be myself. And, and then I think I'm kind of like a manager. And I have to, like, if you're managing a group of people, you have to talk to them individually based on what you perceive will be helpful for them to do their job. And, and all of the actors were really different, so I felt like I had to be sensitive to what they wanted from me and what would help them um, 
and um, and 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 the other thing that I I think that I I felt was that I had to be a grown up. Um, I think that I I I I can be shy and moody and timid and all of those things, and I felt like I wasn't allowed to be any of that when I was directing. Like I had to be available, I had to be helpful, you know. I I had to be. You know, if the actors had to had some sort of emotional situation, I had to be stable. Mm-hmm. So, um, which was really good practice for me because, it, as I said, it is not the way I normally am. Um, so, that's uh, it, I guess. Uh, and w- when you're a d- director, you're you're responsible for the whole, I- and that's different from when you're a scriptwriter. When you're the director, you're like the the visuality of the film. I yeah. guess you have much more. Um, charge of your it's your responsibility what do you have like uh, any visual ideals or ideas uh, that you hold high when it comes to that what do i have any or, or about cinematography and the, the 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 visuality of the film you know i i think that i um i i have uh, um opinions you know about about visual things about aesthetics and I have a lot of interest in painting and composition and stuff like that. Um, I think that, you know, I'm a, no- I'm a novice uh, when it comes to sort of the technical stuff in, 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 in terms of cinematography and I feel like I, I, I felt like in this, in this movie, because it was so hard to shoot, because we had so many things to do in such a short amount of time that I just, I needed to do a kind of bread and butter and because of my limitations um, and lack of experience, I had to do a kind of bread and butter and just make sure that everything I needed was covered. Um, and that was frustrating for me. Uh, and, but I, I feel like, you know, I, I will, hopefully if I ever get to do this again, I will uh, be able to spend more time on the visual. I mean, spend a lot of time in pre-production, you know, talking with the DP, but also um, with the set design and, um, uh, um, and you know, I'm, I'm and the, and the and, and sort of the the special effects stuff that we did, I, I feel I'm I'm kind of pleased with, um, um, but you know I think all you really have is, is your your opinions. That's sort of what your value is, you know, as as a director, is that you hope that you have good opinions. Like you know, people show you stuff and you like you like the good stuff, you know, <laughs> or, you, you know, or, or, you know, you have a good sense of tone and, and that sort of thing. Mm. Before uh, it's time for the audience questions, I just want to, if you could tell us briefly what you're working on now. Um, I've written a script, which I'm trying to get financing for. It's been a struggle. Um, it's a musical, kind of. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's... But it's not a conventional musical. It doesn't have um, like show-stopping musical numbers. It's got a lot of singing in it, but it's kind of more in within the story, and it has more to do in with um, uh, kind of uh, expressing the interior thoughts of the characters. Um, it's almost like monologues, and there's a lot of them. There's like 50 songs in this thing, mm-hmm. um, and. Uh, um, Do you have a composer for for that? Well, I mean, if the movie gets made, you know, then I'll have a composer. I, 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 Carter Carter Burwell is if the movie, you know, is going to do it if the movie gets made. Mm-hmm. Um, he did this, you know. I don't know, he, you know who he is. Mm-hmm. He did the scores for um, adaptation and being John Malkovich. He does all the Coen Brothers movies. Um, and I did a I did a couple of plays with him. Uh, a few years ago as well that I, direct, I wrote and directed and he, he scored. Um, so we have a, a good relationship. Um, so I'm doing that and then I'm writing, I'm going to write something that Spike Jones is going to direct. Uh, we're also trying to get sort of development money for that. There's a lot of trying to get money <laughs> in my life. <laughs> um, and then I'm trying to, I think I'm going to try to do a, a TV series which you know, somewhere down the road, I'm, I'm going to write the pilot, and then if I guess it gets picked up, then it'll go to series, but that's, that's always a big if, so. And that's it. Oh, and I've got a, a play I want to okay. do. Okay. 
<laughs> it's, a, it's a lot. Yeah, and then there's an amusement park ride, which um, <laughs> I'm going to do. And, uh. Okay, um, so uh, let's open for questions for, from the audience. We have two microphones, three microphones on the sides, and you just raise your hands. We have immediately two questions over here in the front. It's a little bit hard to see, so I think we need to light up if, if possible. Uh, a little bit, so we can see the audience. All right, so, yeah, y there's one over there, yeah, okay. <clears throat> uh, there's a scene in Adaptation where the character Charlie is on the set of um, Being Jan Malkovich, and uh, I wonder if, was it really like that for you on the real set? I don't know who's asking the question. I can't see. It's, oh, it's oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean... Uh, yeah, it felt like that to me, but I don't think it really was. But I, I mean, I was really nervous and shy a around actors and, um, at, at that point. And, um, you know, I think a lot of... There's this feeling on the set that everybody's got a job and everyone's running around doing something and... As the writer, I'm just kind of standing there in the way. And um, so, you know, I, I don't think anyone really hated me. Um, <laughs> but but I, didn't, I didn't feel loved. <laughs> that's it, but that's a bigger issue. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have uh, another question? Hey, yeah, over there. Uh -huh, okay. Yeah, Hi, uh, okay. Uh, I'm Emma. Um, I've been wondering, uh, have you ever considered writing a historical uh, script or directing a historical movie and your views about those kinds of films? You mean um, like peri period, my views about period movies? Um, I think I've been interested and I think that I needed to understand what the reason to do it was, you know, before I could do it. Um, and I, 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 I'm actually going to do one. So, um, but it's going to be in, it's sort of an, in a different way. The thing that, um, the thing that Spike and I are going to do together is, is historical in nature, but, um, but oddly so. So, but I don't know if that answers what my views are on them. I don't really have any, any view other than I don't like it when it feels like everyone's dressed in a costume and everyone looks very clean, you know? <laughs> I, I, um, I, I, I feel like there's a kind of a fetishistic quality to that. It doesn't really feel like it's living in the time. Um, so hopefully we won't, won't have that quality. Okay, there's um, another question. There, okay. Th we have some people in the front later. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Uh, I was just wondering, as a writer, do you have issues or trouble um, keeping to one idea? And if so, um, do you have any way of like solving it? Yeah, my kind of way of solving it is I just add more ideas. <laughs> I, I'm not. I mean, it, I'm not even kidding, really. I just sort of like I like the idea of density and sort of opening things up. I, I don't, when I'm writing, I don't have an outline generally where I'm saying, okay, I have to get from this point to this point. Uh, I find that kind of um, um, constricting. And so um, I like to sort of, I like the thing to kind of come develop the way it develops. So if I have, if I have a new idea um, that excites me, I'll include it, if I can. Right. Okay, over here somewhere. Okay. Uh, do you have other tips to encourage uh, other people to take ris risks? <laughs> like actors? If you, uh, more than being sensitive and, uh, and listening I think that, them. I mean, the, to me, the, the, the idea that um, it was very helpful to me to, to analyze um, the, the, you know, the, the terms success and failure. I mean, to really look at them and decide, try to understand why 
failure is such a bad word. Um, and, and then try to remove the, 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 that um, connotation from the word failure. Because, you know, if, if you're not afraid to fail in being an actor, I'm not sure what that would even mean, to, to, look, to look foolish or to, you know, make a bad uh, choice, then you'll take risks. If you are afraid, then you'll, you'll play it safe. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. But can you be uh, afraid of, uh, uh, like, sending that message that you feel uh, that it's a uh, failure? Like, if, if it's a failure in the, in the whole process, can you be afraid of to sending that message to the Sending that to who? To the, to the, to the actor, for instance. If, if everything is going in the wrong direction, can you be afraid of... You mean as a director? As be a director, afraid? yeah. Um, so I'm, I, so I'm, I'm, just so I understand, the, the, actor, the actor is failing and the director is sending the message, or the director is failing in directing the actor? I'm not really clear on what we're... Yeah, if, if you were encouraged them to take risks and... and if I were as a director yeah, to yeah, encourage director an, an and, actor and, to and take and risks. allow them to make risks. Yeah, I think you've got to, you gotta, you know, create an environment where someone doesn't feel that, 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 that they're going to be mocked or laughed at or, or embarrassed by it, you know? You've got you to gotta make people feel safe and, and uh, appreciated. That's what I would think. I mean, that's... That's the best thing you can do for anybody you're working with, right? To, to, get, to get good work out of them. Okay, is this all? Yeah. Uh, I'm just wondering about, it's a question about faith, I guess. Once you hand in the script to the producers, how much rewriting takes place afterwards? I mean, your scripts are quite wacky and complex, and uh, I, I'm guessing they're pretty hard to read for someone who isn't a writer themselves. So how often do you have to work quite extensively afterwards? Um, I think the, write, the rewriting that I've done has mostly been with the directors, not with the executives or production companies. And I have these rela I have a relationship with, you know, Spike Jones and Michelle Gondry, who I've done most of my my movies with. So um, it feels the the rewriting feels very organic to me. Um, you know, with Spike, uh, the, what we do is we just sit together and read through the script and he'll ask me, if he doesn't understand something, he'll ask me what it means. You know, why does this guy say this, basically? And um, it'll put me in a position of having to explain it. And either I explain it or I can't, and then we can change it if I can't, you know? I mean, I'm, so, and, and then, then I feel fine with changing it, you know, at that point, because we've talked it out and, um, but I haven't had much experience with with sort of arbitrary changes or, or changes for the sake of making things more audience friendly or anything like that. And so I'm, 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 I feel fortunate in that regard. Okay, where it's is wor the It's working. Um, how do you see people that are trying, probably desperately, trying to analyze your scripts or films, trying to um, see how do you do in the kitchen of script writing? Um, it might be probably wrong, but somehow it's pro maybe um, as well that funny that your works are living uh, life after <laughs> making them. <laughs> I, I have to, you have to tr do that again. I'm not following what, exactly. What's the question? Um, it w how do you see people that are desperately trying to analyze your How do I see them? You mm -hmm. mean, what do I think of them? Yeah. Um, I... I don't know. I put things out there so people can think about them and talk about them. I mean, I, that's ideal for me. If people want to analyze things and talk about them, that's exciting for me. If people, you know, don't want to talk about them, that's when I... But, you know, or, or they're trying to judge me is what you're saying? No, 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 no. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm... Just to see and understand how I like you it. do it. I like it, you know? I like, I like reading that stuff, and I, you know, I like it especially if it's nice. But <laughs> um, not wild about it if it's not. But you know, I've gotten kind of used to it. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's great for me. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Okay, where is the next over the over there? Uh, yes, hello. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you more about the writing actual process. What do you actually do with your inner critic? 
And the secondly, could you please stand up? Oh, yeah. <coughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, what do you do with your inner critic? And secondly, your leftover garbage pieces, do you shelve them? Do you put them in a drawer to come back and look at them later? How, how do you deal with that whole aspect of just the writing process? I just can't, first can't get over your accent. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Seattle. Okay. <laughs> uh, home. Uh, Country um, So no, I, I absolutely wasn't listening to what you said. Uh, what, 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 was the, what, what do I do with my garbage? <laughs> like, the, basically the question. <laughs> uh, the first one, your, your, your personal inner critic. How, how do you deal with overcoming that in your actual writing process? Oh, you know, it's really hard. And um, it's a terrible thing. And I, and I really need to train myself to let myself write the stuff that isn't going to work out. Because if I'm editing and, and being a critic while I'm writing, I just sit there, which I do a lot of, you know. Um, but, you know, I, I try to force myself. And once I get into sort of a little bit of a, a rhythm, it's easier to... To, but I, you know, to, to sort of stop it and let it happen. And then, you know, often, like if I write something a week later or even a couple of days later, I'll look at it and it'll be much more clear to me what works and what doesn't. You know, line, line for line, I'll be able to edit it and pull stuff out. And, um, and then what do I do with the garbage? Um, usually, I, I, you know, for a while I used to sort of have these ideas that I have to sort of remove from the scripts and think that I'd use them somewhere else. But it doesn't really ever work for me that I can sort of, I mean, a couple of occasions maybe, but where I can extricate something and then organically fit it into something later, it, it's, it always feels really clunky to me. So I tend not to. I have pages and pages of notes and crap that, you know, that I've never looked at again. So. Okay, where is the, there? Um, have you been, like, disappointed with the, or... Um, um, with, with when others have directed your works, have you like felt that they haven't done it proper, so then you have to direct yourself? No, I mean, I think for the most part I've been pretty fortunate, and, and I've also, be, with, because I like the directors, but also because I'm involved in the, in the process of making those movies beyond writing them. So I have some say in what the movies are going to be like. Um, but there is, you know, ultimately kind of this feeling like, there, you know, sometimes there's an emphasis that's, that, I, that I would like to see that isn't there or something that I'm attached to that doesn't end up in the movie. Or, um, and, and, you know, I want, I like the idea of, of creating, you know, more, being more in, in charge of creating the whole thing, taking it from beginning to end. So I'll work with those guys again if they want to. And, um, but I also like to kind of continue to, direct my scripts. All right. Hi. Hi. Uh, why John Malkovich? <laughs> well, because it was funny to me. I mean, that's really the, the only reason it was, it was funny. I mean, I could tell you why it's funny, but, but I don't know that it matters, really. It, it was funny to me, and, and then when, you know, I wrote the script, I wasn't planning on this movie ever getting made so I could make it whoever I wanted. And once Spike came on and it looked like we could get the movie made and we didn't have John Malkovich yet agreeing to do it, we had to think of other people and other possibilities. And I, my, my instinct was confirmed because we couldn't come up with anybody um, who worked uh, as well as John Malkovich. So and was uh, John Malkovich your first choice? Yes. Yes, John Malkovich is the only choice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hello, my name is Jonas Froberg. Hi. I'm a playwright here in Göteborg. Hi. First, I want to thank you for your lovely, crazy work. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm presenting this idea to a few television producers, and they always come back at me with, with aspects of genre or... Um, uh, format, and I know what formats they like. So maybe if I were a very well-known writer, the, they would let me get away with something more different from what they usually do, but now I'm not, so I don't get away with it, but I'm 
this, this is the material I want to produce. I, I'm, not, I'm telling them honestly what, what it is. So they reject it because of it's not doesn't fit. And mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Would you please comment or give me some advice? <laughs> give me the magic word so I'll unlock their... I think my advice would be for you to form fit your work so that it's in the proper format and genre. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, you know, it's harder if you're trying to do your own thing and you're not, you know, they, and they don't see it, they don't see a precedent for it. It's, it's harder to get, you know, get in. I, 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 um, I worked, I, I, it took me over 11 years from the time I left college to get my first job um, in writing, you know, and I, you know, just what happened. I mean, so you, I think tenacity um, is really the only thing, you know, and then, you know, and then, and what happens with tenacity is that the more times you, the more people that see your stuff, the more times that you know, you get to talk to people, the, the greater the chances that you'll hook up with somebody who gets it and wants to do it. So, um, so perseverance and, and, and believing that you can do this thing that you want to do. I mean, I think, I think it's important. And if you believe in your stuff, then you should continue to do it, you know, and continue to, and con should continue to push for it. Okay, <laughs> good. Yeah, hi, over here. I was wondering, um, with the exception of John Malkovich, do you write the screenplays with any specific actors in mind? Like, it seems like maybe Jim Carrey wasn't the obvious choice for that kind of role. Or no, and I mean, you know, I as uh, not the I wasn't the director of m most of the movies that I've been involved with. So, although I was, you know, talk talked about casting and stuff, I didn't. I mean, I wasn't the person in charge of casting the movie, so... Um, but I... But when I write, I don't think of actors. I, I intentionally don't think of actors because I feel like if I were to think of Jim Carrey, then, for example, for that role in Eternal Sunshine, then I would write Jim Carrey, which isn't really the character. That's Jim Carrey. And so the ideal situation is that, for me, is that I write a character that I feel like is realized in some way, that I that expresses some traits that I think are important, and then the actor comes and embodies it and brings Jim Carrey to it, rather than bringing it to Jim Carrey, you know? Um, so, so the answer is no. I don't Thanks. hate actors. <laughs> I don't really hate actors. <laughs> my, my name is Johan, and uh, I wonder, without, without the story, without the script, there is no film. So why is the director's name constantly written in such very large letters and the scriptwriter's name written in such very small letters? Maybe except in your case. And what was the last thing? Maybe except in your case. Oh, okay. Um, you know, there's the auteur theory. I think that that kind of confused everybody for a long time. Um, but I do think that writing in, especially in Hollywood and, and, you know, in the country that I live in is not important. And, you know, it's proven again and again. I mean, the people who um, market movies and make movies don't need writers. Uh, you know, the worst movies with the most problematic scripts become the most successful movies. And so I think when you see that, then writers aren't important. But, you know, directors have names and they have visual styles and you can sort of sell a movie with them because they've got this sort of celebrity sometimes um, quality to them. Uh, but I, I would say, I mean, it's very different in theater. It's the opposite in theater, you know, at least in the United States. I don't know how it is here, but it's the playwright who is the famous name and it is the playwright who owns the material and has copyright and you can't change anything without the playwrights. It, it's not the same with, you know, with writers in, in Hollywood. Hmm. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I just wonder... Here. Okay. Uh, 
I just wonder what do you think the different factor in the movie uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind comparing to the other ones? I mean, which, uh, which factor do you think is the factor that gained you the Academy Award when you uh, consider the other ones? I mean, how do you, per uh, how do you perceive the movie in oh. comparison with the other ones? I don't know. Third time's the charm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I... I mean, it was certainly the most commercially successful of, of my movies, and not incredibly successful commercially, but it was more, you know, more so than Malkovich and Adaptation. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I mean, they, 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 those awards are so stupid, you know, and, they, and I don't think that they, they, there's any rhyme or reason, you know, to, to most why people get them, other than other than that there are big expensive campaigns you know that that are mounted to to try to get people awards and movies awards and i don't know sorry <laughs> and there's one up there yeah uh yeah a friend of mine i don't know if you read it but he said that inception was like a james bond film written by charles kaufman charlie kaufman uh -huh. do you agree and do you th would you consider writing a blockbuster of, of that sort? Um, you know, I, I didn't... I got to be very careful here. I just realized. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I hadn't heard that. Um, and no, I, I don't know. I, I <laughs> you, know the, you know the weird thing? is that you cannot say anything anymore, anywhere, without it, becoming, without it appearing online. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to say anything anywhere anymore. <laughs> um, there are a lot of different reasons to make a movie. Maybe somebody wants to achieve an award or they want to send a message to the audience or it's on a selfish level. Why are you making movies? Um, I think it's, you know, I, I mean, I think it's something I always wanted to do when I was a kid. I always wanted to be involved in this kind of thing. and. Uh, and it always excited me, and I always liked the idea of make believe, make make believe worlds, and you know, making up stories, and um, you know. And then I, and then I don't know. Then it's like I, I'm, I'm trying. I don't know. It's really, uh, it, it, if it, it's my job, you know, partially now. You know, I mean, I'm trying to like, you know pay a mortgage and, and, and I like this particular type of work and I guess it defines me or at least I, it helps me feel defined. I feel like I, maybe I have something to prove. Um, it's terrible reasons, but I mean, <laughs> I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know why I do it. Uh, I, I don't know what else I'd do. That sounds bad, right? Um, I mean, I kind of like it sometimes, but um, but it's sometimes it's really hard for me, and um, and it's a struggle, and I get depressed. So, um, but I'd probably get depressed being a homicide detective, which I said this morning was the other job I wanted. So, um. so you uh, I actually time is running away, not okay. as not as fast. Uh, for us as for Caden Cotard, which oh, <laughs> no, 17 it's years, it's, but it, it has been one hour and a half. And uh, even though I know that there are a lot of more questions, um, Charlie Kaufman has uh, an introduction of Synectic in New York. Yeah, but I do, I do want one more question because there's absolutely no way I'm going to end on that question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's just like, ugh. Yeah, that's... <laughs> bad dramatur that dramaturgy, or so what, what's make it, it something <laughs> nice. There's one question over here. There's one. I want to ask something nice. I, I'm sorry if you're pushing, but it, being an American, I guess it, 
pushy. Um, I, <laughs> I, I've been here um, for about a month, and I, I've worked in film for a lot of years, and I admire you enormously. And what I was wondering was, I, I, well, one, I wanted to say, the nice thing I wanted to say was there's an amazing amount of talent that I've found here. I, I mean, I'm just blown away by some of this. I've been working with students. And I was wondering if you had gotten to have a sense of, it's so, is it a coincidence that you're here? Or have you gotten a sense of some of the people in, in the, the city and the people? You know, well, that's going to be exactly the same answer as the last one. So, <laughs> really? no, it's a coincidence. It's and a coincidence. I, okay. No, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I wanted okay, to come cool. here, but, uh, cool you know, I've been here for I, under 24 hours now. Uh, so you haven't yet. 24, and some, of it's, been, some of it's been trying to sleep. Okay. Um, so, I mean, it, every, everybody seems, you know, okay. a good... That didn't help. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Okay, no well, we don't have time for any more, so. <laughs> so thank you for listening, and thank, thank you, you very Charlie much. Kaufman. <laughs>